That's such a good point too, because yeah. it is right across the street from New School and yep. that transformed that entire area. I'd love to start off kind of telling a little bit of your story with architecture, that journey into architecture, and then also that process of starting or getting your thesis built, I guess. Okay. Yeah, totally. So how I got into architecture, I guess I was always interested in architecture, um, but I kept getting pushed away from it for one reason or, not, or another. And I ended up actually uh, doing my undergrad in visual art and I was doing painting as a major and I ended up being a traveling artist for a number of years and doing shows around the, between Australia and London and America, but ultimately got kind of bored with it. And the next step for me was architecture. I just always figured that that was the next practical step, but then also the next big challenge. I thought, you know, for me as an artist, it was always like, okay, well, you're creating something on a canvas that, you know, people are supposed to have this emotional reaction to, but how can we do that when people, you start creating a building and people are stepping into a space and you get in that same reaction. And it's a, it's the same thing on a much larger scale and it's much more fulfilling. And uh, that was sort of like my push into architecture. And then, um, as you said, yeah, went to new school of architecture. I went into architecture knowing that I also wanted to do development. So I was looking at development pre-architecture then figured if I could do the architect as well, um, I could sort of kill two birds with one stone and be my own client as the ultimate goal. The thesis that you mentioned, I also figured that if I was going to spend an entire year working on one project with collaborating all of some of the you know top minds on the architectural business and the architectural world, I guess at least from in, within San Diego, why not do something that can a have an impact on what's happening in downtown and b if i'm using all those people why not try and do something like i actually build that sounds that was sort of the, the theory there yeah, uh, that's so smart because yeah you it's practical it's like you you make it it's something that you can be work, working on but then also it's like you're basically working while getting a degree for it it's yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. And if, you know, in, in the way I figured it too, was like, look, if I was to go out just by myself and start saying, okay, I'm going to figure this out to design and build a building, um, you're not getting all the support and the backing of a school who's sitting there. And that, you know, obviously the thesis has to be a thesis that's more than just building a single family home. But I thought it was definitely a good way to take advantage of the situation I was in. The thesis ended up being, this was just after the recession. So there was a lot of empty properties. So we really looked at saying, okay, why are there all these empty vacant pieces of property? We started, so when I say we I actually brought in did a thesis with a group of uh, three other students we were able to do that at that point on the assumption that we were actually going to build something that was our selling point to the to the school but the thesis ended up looking at these empty properties and saying look there's all these parcels across the city that are not only privately owned but publicly owned and everyone had plans to ultimately develop it right but nothing for the next you know two four five ten years and that's where we realized that the city of San Diego was also in a similar situation where they had all these empty properties with no immediate future plans to do anything with it. So we said, look, this is owned by the city. It's therefore community owned. So it should be activated for the community. Why not do a temporary development as a placeholder to get ready for that future development? And that sort of in a nutshell was was where our thesis courtyard was born and where we actually ended up using shipping containers as the main building infrastructure for that project. Yeah, so I have a couple of questions about that because I mean, first of all, knowing that you wanted to get in development, mm -hmm. I mean, I have a lot of questions about that too, but I just, I'm like, I have too many segues I want to go. But funding, I want to talk a little bit about funding because this is like, especially when you're a student, that's a big undertaking, even yep. thinking about the financials and all that stuff. So, I mean, it had to have been probably part of your thesis, right, of the funding and how that would even be feasible. Yeah, we were fortunate that we had one of our professors was also a developer, mm -hmm. an architect developer. Uh, before the thesis year, we actually took a class architect as developer at New School, which was super helpful. During the thesis, I just reached out to friends and tried to get connected as much as I could to other developers in San Diego. I think that's one thing that you can certainly do as a student is use that student card and play that student card. Say, hey, look, I'm a student. I'm just trying to learn all this sort of stuff. And people will surprisingly just open the doors for you. So I had a couple of different mentors, not just within the uh, academic side of things, but also outside, which I ended up sort of doing some part-time work for, or more or less volunteering for, but they were able to then teach me some of these things of like how to put together a performer, what it takes to create a new company, why you're creating a new company per project, what you'd have to do if you're creating an architectural company, all that 
that sort of stuff. But you're not wrong when it comes to funding a project. That's always going to be the, the biggest thing, especially at that point. You know, it was myself and a couple other students. We're just all a bunch of poor students. One of our partners was living in a buddy's closet by the end of the uh, <laughs> thesis year. But um, what we actually did was interesting. We, I don't know, do you want me to sort of go into that process of what we did there? To- yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, I think it's helpful, even if they're not a student, even if they're oh, interested totally. in starting development and all that stuff. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. So sort of the backtrack to sort of start at the beginning there, how we were able to raise that funding. Our thesis was, we ended up approaching the city with this whole concept of wanting to create this public-private partnership and activate city-owned land. And that's step one, right? you got to get the property. Or you got to have at least tie some property up. We knocked on the mayor's office. He loved the idea. He, at that point, he was doing like, come meet the mayor for tell him a story or tell him whatever you want or why there's trash on the streets or what you're trying to do for two minutes, right? So we, we went and did that. We stood in line and one morning and went and spoke to him. He's like, great, this is an excellent idea. I love what you guys are doing. Gave us, you know, he's like, told his staff, connect these guys. And they obviously didn't. So we ended up going back, knocking on his door again. This happened about three times until ultimately he was able to uh, connect us with the right people at the city. All, long story short, he put us in a room with all the right people and said, no one leaves until we've got a solution here. Don't say no. So he saw the value in it, which was great for us at that time. We then were able to secure a property that was about three quarters of a city block in the downtown San Diego. We had suggested because it was also the designated the problem corner in downtown San Diego with the police department. It was a vacant block, uh, just nothing but trash, light, vagrancy, drug dealers hanging out in the corners that were always getting busted and whatnot. So we thought we would take actually that challenge on as part of our thesis to start to actually turn that into a community space, which really just falls back into the whole brick broken windows theory. So what we did there is we said, great, we've got this concept, we've got this property. We then put together all the pretty pictures and, and whatnot of like what we could do there. And then what we did is we actually put up a big sign on the property, a big or multiple signs on the property with a bunch of Sharpies and just said, what do you want here? So that was an exercise we did to see if the community would react and, and engage. And we thought that we weren't sure what we were to expect, to be honest, but within uh, within days, the whole signs were filled and wow. we have had an overwhelming amount of responses. And there was things like, you know, weird things like snake pits and... <laughs> football stadiums or whatever but uh, for the most part everything for the most part just sort of pointed back to a place to an outdoor place to gather and socialize and that's what we really took from it which is why then ultimately we ended up creating courtyard which was a combination of a dog park because there was always a, supposed to be a dog park promise for there that was something that was always you know people were always asking for we did a dog park we did a beer garden we did restaurants we did spaces food trucks we did live music we did retail all that sort of fun stuff put right there in the middle of there we put a coffee shop in the corner that the dodgy area where the drug dealer was hanging out, we found the most out there, flamboyant, hula hooping, bubble machine coffee shop guy we could find to go right there on that corner. And then all of a sudden, you know, again, goes back to the broken windows theory, the drug dealer is no longer comfortable hanging out there. And this used to be a place where people would either just not walk to or just put their head down and walk by. That's such a good point too, because it is right across the street from new school. And that transformed that entire area. Like I didn't feel as nervous walking by there or I could go hang out there. I brought my dogs there often and i mean it's crazy i went down to that area like a year ago and it's completely different than what it was when we were there 